TR doing? It's a swab going through the nose, into the back of your nose, into the back of the sinus uh, cavity here, and it's picking up particles of DNA, genetic material. So this can be bacteria, viruses, all kinds of different viruses, all kinds of genetic fragments, your human DNA. That's, and what they're looking for are strips of DNA or genetic material. It's not actual virus they're detecting, it's strips of genetic material. And this is gonna be real important in a minute. Remember these, these base pairs, C, G, and A, and T, the back to, to biology class. We'll come back to that in a minute. New York, New York Times had this article, your coronavirus test is positive, but maybe it shouldn't be. Look at this. Three sets of testing data compiled from Massachusetts, New York, and Nevada, up to 90% of people testing positive carried barely any virus. 90% of these positive cases hardly had any virus in them. Most tests set the limit at 40. Let me explain real quick. So they get that genetic material. There's too little material to detect, so they have to amplify it. So they put it through a cycle. And just think of a Xerox copier. Uh, Mayor Pope and my dad sold Xerox copier machines <laughs> way back in the day together. So a little connection there. But think of this Xerox copier just copying the d uh, DNA material. You've got to go through 40 cycles. That's what they're doing with this test. Some tests are doing 37, most are doing 40. And you are positive for the coronavirus if the test process required up to 40 cycles. If you get above 40 cycles, everyone's positive. If you get below 30 copies or 30 cycles, hardly anyone's positive. Why is that so important? Because of this article. This is from the Infectious Disease Society of America. They're looking at the PCR test with COVID-19 and here's what they found. Results demonstrate that infectivity, that's what we care about. Is there enough virus in me to infect my neighbor? Infectivity is significantly reduced when the PCR cycle values are greater than 24. For every one unit increase in the cycles, the odds ratio for infectivity decreased by 32%. Translation in layman's terms, you're not very infectious if your swab doesn't turn positive with under 24 cycles. Here's what we see in this current PCR test. Under 30 copies, almost nobody's positive. So going back to this article, what they're saying in this article is they only saw infectivity if you had so much virus in you that it actually showed up with just 24 cycles of Xerox copying. Okay, I know that's a little complicated, but you have to have a whole lot of virus in you to be infective. But this test will call you positive. Once you're up to 40 copies, you'll finally turn positive. If you don't do above 30 copies, Almost everyone is negative below 30 copies. So we're do getting a positive result and it doesn't translate to that you have a live virus in you that can infect your neighbor. So in summary, infectivity only in people with symptoms and less than 24 cycles run on the PCR. So what we've always known with viruses to transmit, you gotta be symptomatic. Almost all transmission is in symptomatic people and you Again, a good question. And what is now sort of uh, evolving into a bit of a standard that if you get a cycle threshold of 35 or more, that the chances of it being replication competent are minuscule. Mm. So that if somebody, and you know, we do, we have patients and it's very frustrating for the patients as well as for the physicians. Somebody comes in and they repeat their PCR and it's like 37 cycle threshold, but you never, it, you almost never can culture virus yeah. from a 37 threshold cycle. So the, I think if somebody does come in with 37, 38, even 36, you got to say, you know, it's just, it's just dead nucleotides period. Mm. Yeah. Because as you know, we can't easily culture infectious virus. You don't have a BSL-3 lab everywhere. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So is uh, the the threshold cycle uh, uh, is reporting out a pretty standard practice in doing a diagnosis now rather yeah. than just positive yeah. or negative? Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, if, if when you go in, when, when I get my test, you know, it's negative. When someone comes in and it's positive, they don't give them the threshold until the, you go back and ask for it. Okay, but they know, they've got it. They've got it. Right. They've got it. I want to ask this to Carrie. 
How do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this, um, I think misuse PCR is not quite, I don't think you can misuse PCR. Actually. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body, okay? So that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful. But the, the real misuse of it is, is that it, you don't need to test for HIV. You don't need to test for the other 10,000 retroviruses that are unnamed also in the subject. See, somebody that's got HIV generally is going to have almost anything that you can test for because they have definitely been, HIV is a fairly rare virus. There's only one million of us out of 250, 300 million people in America that have that virus. So you have to get around, either your mother had to have it and pass it to you, or you have to really be paying a lot of attention to people that do have it and paying only attention to them and get a pretty good chance of getting it that way. It's hard to get it. But it, if you have it, there's a good chance you've also got a lot of other ones. Because you've been in the, in the market for you've been it's been possible for you to get a lot of, it's, it's, it's a, to test for that one and say that has any special meaning is what I think is the problem. Not that PCR has been misused. It's like, it's an estimation. It's not an estimation. No, it's a real, it's a really quantitative thing. It How tells you it? something about nature and about what's there, but it, it, it allows you to take a very minuscule amount of anything and make it measurable and then talk about it in meetings and stuff like it is important. See, that, that, that's not a misuse, that's just sort of a misinterpretation. Even after all the, these uh, uh, PCR, this quantitative PCR, that if you just get down to a basic virological count, it's still one in a thousand to one in ten thousand uh, HIV, HIV in one to one in a thousand, one in five hundred to one in a thousand T cells. It, and it is. No, they, that, they, there's very little of what they call HIV, and what's been brought out here by Phil Pot and, and, and Isai already. The measurement for it is not is not exact at all. It's not it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples. An apple is an apple. You know, you can get something that's kind of like if you got enough things that look kind of like an apple, and you stick them all together, you might think of it as an apple. But and, and HIV is like that. Those tests are all based on things that are invisible and they are, the results are inferred in a sense. PCR is separate from that, it's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is, um, but, it's, but it's not, it doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was gonna hurt you or anything like that, that's what it's not. So even if you believe in HIV, it can't tell the difference between virus particles or active live virus, I mean there's a lot of questions involved. Mm -hmm. Guys, Thank you very, very much. I don't know what else I can say, but to uh, let you know that we will um, hold more events where people can get together. Hopefully not when they're all out of town for the holidays, but uh, when we can have a really, really continuing and a growing movement of people asking simple questions. We don't expect to...